the SAT is full of systems of equations problems and one of the things I always focus on with my students is making sure that you know the ins and outs and all the methods of solving systems because they just show up show up so often and often in the no calculator section where you can't use the calculator matrix functions to make quick work of them. Some of them however are particularly interesting because some of them ask for rather than the individual answers they ask for the sum of the answers and that's usually a clue that something pretty cool is possible now to look at the system that they're giving us here 3a plus 2b equals 24 and 4a plus 5b equals 53 it's not horrible but doing the math with this could could lead to some tricky arithmetic because you'd have to I'd say I'd probably multiply the top by negative 5 and the bottom by positive 2 to make this line into 10s and then cancel them out. But you'd be working with 24s and 53s and I don't know, it might not be super convenient. It's not horrible. It's not going to be as bad as the next one. But that'd be the elimination method and I guess that's okay. But actually I don't want to erase all that. I just want to erase the markings. But what I want to show you is that what they're asking you for is something a little bit different. We don't need to solve the entire thing. We just need to know the sum. And most of the problems that have this, that ask for this, and there's a surprising, they're surprisingly frequent, and a lot of the practice SATs I've done is that if you add these two systems together, okay, just as is, without the need for elimination, what you're going to get is 3 plus 4a, that's 7a, 2 plus 5b, that's going to be 7b, and 24 and 53, well that's 77. And this beautiful thing here, this I don't think is a coincidence, since there's an equal sign here, you are allowed to divide every single term by 7, for instance, multiply by a constant, 1 seventh, and not change the value of the equation. And what do we get? If we remove those, we're going to get a plus b is equal to 11. Done. Think a couple of seconds from not having to actually solve out the entire system. So that's just a neat little thing that happens every time they ask for a sum of solutions. The equations are probably going to be set up so that if it doesn't work out this nicely it might just be might just be still even a little bit more convenient than having to solve the system for both elements individually. I have another example here which is a little bit stranger, um, but they're also asking for what is the sum of r plus b. They're saying r plus v equals what? Well, you're going to have to line this one up as if you're going to do elimination on it. So I have 13r plus 8v equals 47. And for this one I'm going to move 17 over, like so. And that's going to get me 17r plus 22v equals 63. And that's standard form. And it turns out, indeed, see, these numbers are ridiculous. I mean, the best you can do for elimination would be like, I don't know, maybe the top by what? The top by 11 and the bottom by 4. So you can get 88 and 88 on this row. But even so, the numbers doing the multiplication with 47 and 63 and 13 and 17, this is the no calculator section that this particular question appeared on. But look what happens. They're asking for the sum, and what happens if you add the two things together? So we're going to get, um, that's 10, and so that's 30, 30R. This is 8 and 22, that's also 30V. And this one, I cannot make a fool of myself, let's see, that is 10, and 10 that is 110 and well this it turns out that the answer on this one isn't clean it's not a whole number but indeed you can still divide each element by 30 and now we'll have r plus v is equal to 110 over 30 that fraction won't fit inside the SAT grid inboxes, but you could reduce it to 11 over 3, or you could go to, well, no, you can't go to your calculator, but you could happen to know that that is equal to 3.66, which, which they will also accept 
in the boxes. I probably just put the 11 slash 3 in. But anyway, so that's a little cool method um, I discovered while I was doing some practice with a student. And just when they're asking about the sum, this is valid. Now I want to show you something. I have one more example for which you cannot use this. It starts to look like you can because if you add these two lines together you're going to get like 8C and you're going to get 8D and then 17 and 39 that's 56 if I'm correct that is all divisible by 8 it is right so uh, something like that is actually saying C plus D equals 7 but that is totally unhelpful because Although this looks innocuous enough, if you take this expression that they're asking about, which is 4c minus 4d, you could think of that as 4c minus d. Whoops, c minus d. And you're thinking, well, is that related to c plus d? Well, no, as I've already crossed it out. No, 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 no. You do not have enough information to figure out what c minus d is. These things could be anything. So not, enough, not nearly enough information there. There's no way to finagle this expression. As I've already pointed out, it's totally useless, as if I haven't crossed it out enough. No, knowing about C plus D does nothing for knowing what C minus D is. And this one you would have to do by hand. You'd have to get C and you have to get D, but that's okay. The system, the elimination on this isn't too bad. You probably just do, um, probably just wind up doing the top equation by negative 3. That would get you the negative 6. Down that way you'd be able to eliminate C. So that one's not so bad. But um, yeah, just make sure that you don't try to attempt this trick on anything other than questions like this where they're asking for the sum of R and V, or in this case the A plus B, also the sum.